Hi, I'm Iris, artist, teacher, vlogger and recovering perfectionist. Today I thought it would be fun if we painted some beer coasters. I hope you'll join me and uh, let's get going. Here's some I did earlier. I bought some blank coasters online. That's pretty simple. Don't have to go trawling for beer coasters. So these are the ones that I will be using. I want to just quickly apologize in advance for any noise that you hear in this video. I live in an extremely noisy place and I cannot control what people do outside my house. You might hear some drilling, sawing and random people shouting because that's the joy of living in central London. I'm going to work on four coasters at the same time so that I can work on one whilst the other one is drying. I won't have to use my heat tool so much and also it will be a nice way of getting four that are kind of in the same style, in the same kind of series. I'm going to start with a small layer of gesso just to kind of um, make sure that the surface is ready to take the paint and what I tend to do is whilst I use my gesso I also already start using paint. I like to use these first layers to immediately start building up some texture so I start here with a palette knife because you get a kind of smooth slightly scratchy texture just to spread the paint around a little bit um, and then I'm just going to protect my work surface a little bit and then I'm going to go in with a brayer and get some of that texture there as well. So you'll notice that I put the emphasis of the tool or the supply I'm using, um, I use it in specific areas. I don't do the same thing everywhere because it just kind of lends interest and as you start building up the layers it will just give your um, it will give your painting or your beer coasters a real sense of kind of like variedness in the background. In these background layers I am trying to use quite um, matte paints so gesso is obviously a matte paint and then I've got the pale blue that I was using is a wall paint um, and this is paper artsy fresco finish in rose and they're all quite muted and matte drying paints. In these first layers I might go quite scratchy and bold and um, do things that will just become part of those layers um, that I then work on top. So I kind of, at this point, I use this as a warm up. I um, um, won't really pay too much attention to the colors that I use and stuff like that because I know that I can come in with my gesso again and just put another layer on top to push it all into the background. So this is kind of just an opportunity to play with your supplies and kind of get a general color scheme going, a general mood for your um, for your coasters and I would uh, encourage you to do the same thing on the back. Obviously when I used a real b beer coaster I liked having this as a kind of a memory but making something on these ones that are blank on both sides I would most likely do my first few layers both on the front and the back so that it kind of becomes cohesive and you don't have to like go back at another point once you've done your nice artwork on the front um, and then you work on the back and you might kind of you know get paint splotches on the front. So I'm just gonna work on these for a little while and uh, put some music in the background and uh, I will check in with you in a minute.
I keep grabbing different art supplies and then I add the same art supply but in a slightly different uh, place or in a slightly different quantity on each of the um, coasters. Not paying a lot of attention to composition and stuff at this point in time but I am choosing different colors that I know go together quite well so I'm choosing some reds and pinks and then I'm choosing some turquoise to kind of offset those colors and I am applying everything in different places so that the colors stay nice and bright. sides are looking fairly similar now um, so I'm going to choose to um, I quite I think I slightly prefer this side so I'm going to um, leave this side as the back and then I'm going to be working on these to add some more things on top to add a face and kind of make it look a bit more similar to one of these so the first thing I'm going to do is add some more gesso and kind of push all of these colors into the background. I want to be a little bit more careful now because I don't want to kind of get all smudgy on the back now. So a thin layer of gesso applied with a brayer and maybe um, smoothed out a bit with a palette knife. You still see all of those nice colors from the previous layer but you've got a little bit more of a um, equal layer to work on top of and in addition obviously the gesso is going to make sure that we uh, whatever we do on top is going to adhere nicely and the brayer and the um, the palette knife have given the surface a really nice texture so that everything will be I don't know a bit grungy which is something that I really like okay so I want to add a face now and there are a couple of ways to do this. So these I did a couple of years ago and the face is really in the middle of the circle. But what I really liked of this one is that it kind of comes off and it uses the whole circle. So I'm going to be using um, this kind of technique. And what I do is I grab a pen. Um, this is a Uniball Signo in black. I grab a pen, not a pencil, because I just want to go straight in and kind of let go of that perfectionism and not be too worried um, about changing the lines and getting it all perfect. I'm just going to go in. And I am also, um, as an added bonus, I'm going to use my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand, to do a really rough um, kind of face. something I'm quite happy with. So I'm going to do the same on the other three. And when I say the same, I mean something slightly different. agree these are utterly weird <laughs> and I quite like them. So once I've got the kind of the sketches down with my non-dominant hand I might come in and add some more elements like rosy cheeks or something and I might use my uh, dominant hand just because it's easier but I will still kind of do deliberate wonky lines. Now I'm going to come in with my watercolors. I do this in a super rough way. Um, I use basically these three colors that I just always have in my palette, um, which is like two kind of um, uh, peachy tones and then a, a kind of an orangey tone for slightly darker shading. The nice thing about the Stabilo all is that once it's dry, it is waterproof. So I can just kind of go over all of the lines and I don't really have to worry about the paint 
uh, or the pen smudging too much. Although if you like a more smudgy look, then you could do you could use things like a Stabilo all to sketch instead of your um, instead of a pen. I love wonky faces, I love doing things imperfectly, um, partly born out of laziness, but also partly born out of trying to work with kind of my personality. I would, um, I used to be much more perfectionistic and like trying to get things right, trying to get things really even and like pristine and that kind of thing and it made me very unhappy so that's when I started doing things like left-handed work, um, making things wonky deliberately, um, being much more kind of slapdash about things and kind of embracing the style that came out of that um, and that's kind of how I got to this um, wonky and like um, kind of careless or carefree is maybe the the, the better word um, to this style. Obviously you don't have to um, paint the same stuff that I do. I would actually encourage you to not paint the same stuff as I do but paint what you want to paint. Um, but maybe you can like embrace that carefree attitude um, where you're just being a little bit more slapdash about it and a little bit less perfect. Um, because when you give yourself permission to do that, you can actually find a lot more joy and a lot less kind of um, inner negative self-talk. So that's definitely something that I like to encourage all my students to do. So I have added kind of like a, um, a, um, a color on the face and then some shading. And now I'm gonna come in with a slightly thinner brush. I was using a, my biggest watercolor brush. I'm gonna come in with a smaller watercolor brush um, to add just some um, swirly shading in a kind of very thin line. And what I'm gonna do for that is I'm going to use colors that are not flesh tones, um, but that are kind of opposite. So I'm gonna go for a turquoise and I might come in with a kind of a pink or I might come in with a purple or a dark blue. And it gives real interest to the face. Uh, as you can see, I haven't let the previous layers dry. That means they're going to kind of get, m kind of merge in. Uh, some of these lines will be, will stay like proper lines and other ones will just kind of um, dissolve into the wet paint. And it's all going to just add to that aesthetic that I like. And so you're seeing, I'm just putting small lines in different places, I am not really blending, I am just letting them be where they are. Moving on now from that turquoise, I have now selected a indigo, so like a really dark blue. And I just kind of follow the lines from the black pen that I made earlier. And just kind of roughly going where those lines go and hoping for the best. I don't always work in the same order, but the next thing that I might do is add some color to the lips. Again, I'm being quite slapdash. I always work on the understanding that I can come back and refine things as I go along. <laughs> step for me is going to be adding some highlights and to do that I like to use quite a rough big brush so that you get nice texture and um, it doesn't kind of become too precise. I'm not too worried about going over certain elements like those pupils I can always bring them back you can kind of see them through um, and I'm going to start adding some subtle highlights by just kind of scratching the paint over the surface. And that's why that big bristly brush is really nice. And this way she'll also start looking a bit less like she's got the tan from hell. 
So I'm going to use this big brush for things like the nose bridge and a bit like here on the cheekbones. Are they the cheekbones? Yes. And the chin. Um, a little bit on that bottom lip as well. Um, where I don't use this brush is I don't use it in the eye because I don't have enough precision. I'm going to come in with um, something else at a later point that allows me to kind of go inside of the lines. It's kind of like a decision of n no precision in some places and then precision in other places so that you get a kind of like deliberately messy but still still neat <laughs> um, result. Okay, time to put in some of that nice purple hair. One of the things you'll start noticing um, at this point is that all of those previous layers that we kind of did quite slapdash, they create this wonderful texture underneath the hair and I really enjoy that. I love that. One of the big things that I like in to do in my style is that um, I will do something like purple hair, but everywhere in the hair it might look slightly different. So you haven't got a block of color that is completely the same. There's always like this kind of raw grunge underneath and it gives everything just such depth and interest and I love that. Just to jazz it up a bit, I'd like to add some subtle splatters in the hair. I'm going to go back to that kind of fluorescent pink there uh, with a small brush, because small brush give little splatters that I can hopefully control. We'll see. A bit more water probably. And I just gently tap the brush and some splatters will come off. Right, so the splatters went onto the face a little bit as well, but you can kind of just with a with a damp cloth, if you want to get rid of them, um, you can, or you can leave them on just as kind of interesting texture. Right, I'm just going to come in now with my um, applicator bottle, which has got a very fine tip and it's got white uh, acrylic white fluid acrylic in it um, with a little bit of airbrush medium to make it flow and not clog up not clog up the tip I'll have the control to fill in the eyes so that's what I use this for because having the eyes like that with the whites properly white it really makes them pop more and I might also use my applicator bottle um, just to add some subtle lines in the places that there are highlights uh, or that there is white um, because that is just something that I like to do. Now I'm going to dry this really thoroughly because the next step will be adding a layer of clear gesso on the whole coaster. Actually no, there was one more thing I wanted to do and that was I wanted to make uh, do the color on the eyes and this is a little trick that I do where it kind of like it helps you have a recognizable style and that is basically just using the same supplies all the time um, so um, it's not it's not fake as in like I want I want to make the hair purple because that's what feels right to me but it's also then a deliberate choice because I know that if I always make the hair purple it kind of looks like my art so I'm using the supplies that I that really speak to me but by kind of always using them and if I vary it I only vary it very subtly rather than all of a sudden using all different supplies it really helps um, get this cohesive style from piece to piece where um, even if you're doing something different you're still using similar supplies and similar techniques and that will make it so you've got a recognizable style now because I've been using water-soluble media, this stage might smudge a bit, so I'm going to be quite careful. I'm going to put a blob of clear gesso on top of each of these, and then I'm going to use a key card to gently spread it out on top of the whole card. But I'm going to try to only go over each bit once, if I can. Um, so that I don't agitate the layers underneath too much 
Um, and so I don't scrape too much. And if there's very big blobs of gesso, I just kind of try to get rid of those a little bit so that you don't have these big lines. But it will all dry clear. But once the gesso is on and you've spread it out, try uh, to resist the temptation to um, really agitate it a lot more. Try and go over each bit only once or twice if you must, but really quickly um, after the first time. Because if I were to now start scraping that one again, I would, all that paint has been reactivated. So I would then start scraping all of the color into different places. You see it a little bit on this one where the purple went onto the eye. You can also wipe it off. And the key is to put enough gesso on, but not too much, um, which is a little bit of, <laughs> it's not an exact science, obviously. And then I am again going to dry this really thoroughly before I move on to the next step. Time to do some kind of details and embellishments. So here I'm gonna come in with pencils in different colors to just kind of add some motifs that I tend to put on my work. Um, usually it's like details with red. Um, it's really important that your previous layer is dry and that you don't um, push too hard because obviously you could push the clear gesso off and you don't want to do that. So the clear gesso provides this really nice and scratchy um, textured layer that will take these colored pencils really well, much better than if you didn't do that. And I'm just gonna come in with all of my dreadfully not very sharp pencils to add some nice texture and color with these pencils. Because also what the, what the gesso means is that when you put the colored pencils on, the color comes out much better than if you hadn't put the gesso on. Um, I do think that it's nice to be a bit sparing with the colored pencil because the texture of the gesso does mean that it shows up really well and um, quite it's quite much. <laughs> it can be a bit much. Um, so I did the red, those accents with red that I like to do. I did some of the fluorescent pink um, and then now I'm going to go in with a um, turquoisey type pencil and I'm going to basically reinforce those lines that I did before, remember in the watercolor shading layer. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go over and make some swirls and um, kind of just add a little bit of interest. And I'm not super precise about this. Um, I kind of want to be a little bit imprecise and get some texture kind of over the face as well. It's what you can see in this one quite well, um, where it's just got some subtle blue, um, I think that was a blue pencil, um, where I just kind of went over the face. And it just adds real interest, again, in making sure that bits of the same color, like the face, uh, don't all just look homogenous. So in that layer where I added the gesso, um, I don't mind the smudginess where it did it in places, but where I do want to kind of bring back some of the detail is the white eyes, because I feel like they're quite integral, in, integral, integral, whatever, to the kind of, the, the way that this kind of looks the brightness and stuff. So I'm going to come in and this time I'm going to be using a slightly smaller brush so that I've got a little bit more um, a, a bit more control um, and I'm going to put in some more white on the bits where the purple smudged a bit too much for my liking. I'm still definitely prioritizing kind of like a brush strokey look rather than a smooth look. And now I'm nearly done. I mean, the only thing that I would um, really need to do here to make this done is to reinforce those black lines. So come back with my pen and to obviously put those pupils in. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then after that, um, 
those are the things that I would do to make it finished but I can still come back with all of these techniques that I've just been doing for the last five or ten minutes and just keep coming back and keep adding those to kind of build up interest there's no real kind of there's no finished in that sense until you feel like okay now it's time to step away enjoyed this session of painting beer coasters together I hope you will join hashtag iris beer coaster club on Instagram which is where me and some other people are posting all our altered beer coasters and you know it's pretty pretty awesome work in there and um, really exciting if you've got any questions please ask away about techniques about supplies about I don't know existential angst I don't know just ask away. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe if you haven't already because that really helps. Let me know if you'd like more of these videos, different types of videos. Um, yeah, let me know. Bye! Hi, I'm Iris.